Welcome to the video. Uh, in this one, we're going to talk about importing external data into the Z1 Analyzer. So this is a track or a pro license only feature. Uh, so if you're a standard license, you would need to upgrade to either a track or a pro license to be able to do this. So the Z1 Analyzer can read data from multiple SIMs, since iRacing, Assetto Corsa, R-Factor, and all of those. But there are also times when you want to import external data. So this would be, say you went to uh, a track day and you were using a phone app, something like Race Chrono or Harry's Lap Timer, and you wanted to import that data into the Z1 Analyzer. This video is going to show you how you do that. Or if you have a data logger, something by AIM or MoTeC or similar, you can import that data into the Z1 Analyzer. So the first step on importing all this data is actually getting it out of whatever you're currently using. So if you are using uh, a phone app, something like Race Chrono. Race Chrono actually has an export option directly to the Z1 Analyzer. You'll see it in the uh, app when you're exporting your data. If you're using another app, perhaps Harry's Lap Timer, you would want to export that uh, as a CSV file because the analyzer can read any CSV file with data in it. If you're using something like an AIM logger or a MOTAC logger, for those, you would also want to export the data into a CSV format. Uh, and these are options within those um, uh, data loggers and their software to do that. Once you have the CSV, that is what you're going to import into the Z1 Analyzer. So here we are in the Z1 Analyzer, and uh, we want to import some data from an external source. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the File menu and choose Import External Data. So that will bring up this dialog. Uh, so this is broken into three sections. Uh, we'll uh, go through them uh, one by one as we import the data. Um, a couple of highlights though. So the first one is the select file. <clears throat> this is where you choose the file you want um, and you can specify what sort of separator is used within that file. Then you've got information about the lap, you know, who drove it, uh, the track, things like that. And then at the bottom you have how do you map that data in the file to the information in the Z1 analyzer. So to start, let's click the Browse button and find the file we want to import. Uh, so I have a whole bunch of files here from external sources. Uh, we're going to start, we'll look at one from Race Chrono. So I choose that file, the name of it is right here. So here's the separator that gets used. Uh, by default, the analyzer will try to choose it on its own, which is the automatic setting. You can also choose comma, pipe, or semicolon. So you'd only really need to adjust this if the information down here does not look properly organized. Uh, but in this case, it is, so everything is fine. Uh, as an example, if I chose something like pipe, then this information here doesn't look correct. Um, it's not organized into columns, it's just one um, sort of string of data. So I'm going to go back to automatic, and now things are properly uh, organized into columns. The next section is the lap information. So this is the driver's name, the car, the track, and the date the uh, laps were driven. The analyzer will attempt to fill in as much of this as it can based on what information is in the file you're loading in, but there are cases where you might have to enter some of it. So for example, the, uh, the race chrono uh, output does not include the driver name or the car name, so you would have to enter that yourself. So you can just type in, you know, obviously your name and whatever your car is that you're driving. Um, it did fill in the, the track for me uh, and the date and the time. So the next uh, part here is the how we want to map the data in the file to uh, the channels in the analyzer. So there are various uh, mappings that come with the analyzer, and they'll be in this drop-down here. When you choose the file, the analyzer will attempt to load the mapping automatically. So in this case, it identified this file was from Race Chrono, and it loaded the Race Chrono mapping. So that means a lot of this work down here will be done for me. If I scroll down in this area, the next section I come to here is column names and the first row of data. So this is really important. It's every file will, will define, um, will have a few lines which show the column names in it. And that's basically what does each column contain. So here we have a fragment ID, a lap number, a lap time, etc. And then what's the first row of the data? So the first row on this file, it starts here. Again, the analyzer will attempt to specify this information automatically based on the selected mapping. If a mapping wasn't selected, you can manually assign the column names and the first row of data. So the information right here is uh, number one. If not identified, control click the row containing the column name. So I can control click this row if I wanted to. 
or go back here and control click that row to specify the column names. And then I can click the first row, whichever one should be the first row for data. So you need to specify both of those before you can import anything. So now you want to make sure that all of the uh, columns uh, are properly mapped how you want them to be. Uh, so this mapping here, this race chrono one, I, uh, it has mapped the default columns in race chrono for me. So for example, lap number here, it's specified as lap number. Um, the lap time is specified as current session time. And I can scroll over and uh, get other things to, to see all the rest of the columns, the lap distance, or uh, altitude, etc. Whatever the columns are that I, want to, that I want to include. There are some that you definitely have to include if you want certain features. So you need to have um, a column specifying the distance and the lap time. Now that can be the current time, it could be a lap time depending on how your data ex is exported. Uh, you also want to have uh, the latitude and the longitude so that we can actually draw a track map. Uh, if you don't include that, then you'll just get a circle as a track map. Um, so it is very useful to include latitude and longitude. So to specify a column, all you do is you click here and you say, okay, well, this one is latitude, so that's fine. And then you can also choose how the uh, format of the column is. So in this case, it's decimal degrees. But if your latitude was specified in um, sort of minutes and seconds, you would choose this option. And as you choose different options, you'll get different possibilities. So say this was a break column, you would then have these percent options that you could choose 0 to 1, 0 to 100, or 0 to 1000. Um, we'll put this back on latitude. Then there's also this option here, this uh, hertz option. So the hertz is how much time uh, passes between each of these uh, rows in your file. So by default, the analyzer will determine it based on information in the file. And that would be using um, the lap time, because you can figure out how much time has elapsed between each entry. Uh, sometimes, though, this is not uh, appropriate. You might need to specify on your own, uh, in which case you can specify using these, uh, the options down here. Most data loggers are at 60 hertz. Um, but if yours is something else, uh, you can enter whatever you want to make that work properly. So let's look at another file we might want to import. So uh, instead, we will look here uh, at this one. So this one is from a, um, a AIM data logger. And uh, again, the separator is automatic. And if you look at the mapping, in this case, it chose the AIM CSV uh, metric mapping. And it filled in all my information, the driver name, the track name, the car, the date, and the time. Uh, and then when I come down here, it has also identified the column names and the first row. So everything is set up for me. I don't have to do anything. Uh, and it's also identified the columns. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is custom uh, columns, custom channels, sorry. So this option down here. Uh, this is a pro option only. So if you're on a track license, you, uh, this option is not available to you. So if you select this option, it will look at any column which is not assigned. So in this example, the logger temperature, and it will create a custom uh, channel within the Z1 analyzer and assign this data to that channel for you. You can do this manually. So if you scroll down and you can uh, see the custom channels here, you can add a new custom channel and you could create that custom channel, in which case I could call this logger temperature. Uh, and then I could assign this logger temperature to that custom channel if I wanted to. So that's another way you can do it uh, if you want to uh, create the custom channels manually. So after you've uh, looked through your file and made sure that everything lines up how you want it to um, and that you're importing all your data, the next thing you would do is just click Import. So I click the Import button. You see down here the import uh, is occurring. And then you get the, uh, the dialog saying the import is finished. Uh, so the next thing you knew, uh, that you'd want to do uh, is have the analyzer scan for these new files. So I'm going to click yes on this. And we get here to the analyzer uh, scan lab scan dialog. And it's basically going to go through the data that was just imported and add it in to the uh, Z1 analyzer's, analyzer's database so you can then open that. So yes, it's finished. I would like to open them. So now I'm in the open lab. And I have the sim selected to external data, which is what I want. Uh, and then the track, which is the one I just imported. So I can choose any of these laps. So I will choose this particular one. 
And now I have that lab open, uh, it's in the analyzer, and I can do uh, whatever I want to do with it, look at the data I'm interested in, things like that. So the ability to import data into the Z1 analyzer is a very powerful tool. It expands the reach of the Z1 analyzer beyond just using sims to allow you to use it in the real world uh, with real world data. Uh, you can even compare data from the real world with data from the sim. So if you're running at a particular track, you can import that data. And if you ran in the same car in the same track in a sim, you can compare those two to see how they compare. So there's a lot you can do with this, uh, and I hope this has been a useful video explaining how you do this. Please like the video and subscribe, and we'll have more videos in the future talking about the features of the Z1 Analyzer.